Hello, it's my pleasure to be sitting down today with Tanya Peebles, Harold and Inga Marcus Dean of Engineering, Professor of Chemical Engineering, and Penn State parent. I'm Jonathan Darty, two-time architectural engineering alum and president of the Penn State Engineering Alumni Society. We're here in one of the beautiful new engineering buildings in Penn State's University Park campus to talk about the future of Penn State engineering. You ready to dive in, Tanya? Jonathan, it's always nice to have you on campus. We have a lot of fun together, and it's even better to be in this beautiful space in the Engineering Design and Innovation Building. So let's get started. Fantastic. So first question, you've been Dean of the Penn State College of Engineering for more than a year now. Hard to believe. But what's important for our engineering alumni and friends to know first about you and the college? I would say, for me, it's how much I appreciate the alumni and friends of the College of Engineering. Our alumni, that 100,000 plus strong group of people is part of our value proposition. When we talk to our students, they're joining this amazing community. And we have alumni that are out doing really amazing things and we're always interested in engaging people in terms of mentoring our students or being role models for our students or engaging with us in research and education. So, any ways that we can engage our alumni is, is really a great bonus for our current students to, in being a part of the Penn State College of Engineering. Perfect, yeah. I think personally the college is going through a bit of a renaissance. Um, and it's not just the fantastic building program that's going on campus, although that certainly is part of it. Uh, as Dean, what's your vision for the College of Engineering over the next five years? So our vision for the college is really to be excellent. And it's really important for me to think about how to engage our people in these wonderful spaces. We've created an environment that fosters innovative collaborations and education. And in terms of education, really thinking about how do we equip our students with the hands-on experience, uh, experiences that really gets them to be ready to work on day one, which is such a proud part of who we are as a college. We're also making investments in research in critical areas and really looking at to where the engineering degrees of the future are going and how Penn State, because of our historic nature and also the breadth of students we educate, is really a, a huge player in producing the engineering workforce of the future. And I'm excited to dive into that a little bit more, but mm -hmm. Since we're talking about facilities, I have to ask, because this is a burning question, what's up with Hammond Building? So Hammond is supposed to come down in 2028. And so uh, while we're waiting for Hammond to come down, there's a lot of other things happening in terms of our building and our infrastructure. But uh, people are looking for that date when, when that's really going to happen. Yeah, I, I've talked to some of the development people in the college, and I've said, if you really want to raise money, you need to auction off the opportunity to hit the button to implode Hammond Building. <laughs> that's how we'll get a lot of money for the college. But can you share with the alumni and friends who are listening a little bit about your background and what brought you to Penn State? Yeah, I, it, it's hap I'm happy to share that. I, I'm really proud of the family that I grew up in that really gave me the passion for learning and curiosity. My father was in the military, so we were a military family. He retired in North Carolina. So I went to school at another large public land grant in the North Carolina State, and I pursued chemical engineering. And then through a variety of experiences that are similar to what our students experience, whether it's internships or research experiences, I got excited about going to grad school. And so I went to graduate school at Johns Hopkins University in Baltimore, where I got my PhD. I spent a little bit of time at Caltech, where I did a postdoc, before starting as a faculty member at the University of Iowa. And so my faculty career, I really grew up as a faculty member at Iowa, which is another Big Ten institution. And so really making that transition to come to Penn State was smoother because it was another Big Ten school, but it was also an opportunity to just do things on a, on a larger scale and, and to really try and be impactful as an engineering educator. Fantastic. And you're not the only engineer in your family. No, no. My husband, Gary, is a, a teaching professor in chemical engineering, and my daughter, Amelia, is an aspiring architectural engineer. And so we're really excited for, as she starts and her I'm journey And I'm excited here. for that, too. <laughs> That's great. And congratulations. I mean, to being part of the Penn State family, I think it's going to resonate with a lot of our alumni and friends out there. And so it's really exciting mm -hmm. to, to have you as a part of that experience as well. Um, was there a pivotal moment in your career 
that led you to pursue leadership in higher education? You know, I had, a, I had some opportunities to do leadership as a faculty member. So I was director of the undergraduate program, really going through curriculum change and sort of modernization when I was at Iowa. But then also, um, I had the opportunity to participate in what's now known as the Big Ten Academic Leadership Program. And so it was an opportunity for me to sort of have an, uh, a, a toe in the water of what people in leadership at universities face. And it helped me to begin to develop a vision. And that vision was bigger than my department. It was something that would sort of lead to academic leadership, administrative leadership. So I was excited to be able to do that. I was also involved in research leadership at my institution. It's a part of our Center for Biocatalysis and Bioprocessing. So I was in the biotech world, very similar to what uh, the Huck Institute does. And so that was another opportunity for me to lead groups of researchers and really think about the qualities that you have to have as a leader to develop people, to develop talent. And so that's something that we have a lot of at Penn State, and I'm happy to see that talent excel here. Yeah, that's great. So what excites you most about leading the College of Engineering at this really important moment in time? So leading engineering at Penn State is really special because of the amazing people in the college. We have amazing faculty and students and staff. And that idea of leading research and doing innovative things in education is really special to be a part of. And then you add these wonderful facilities that help support these folks who are doing incredible things. It's a, it's a pretty nice place to be in terms of the opportunity in this College of Engineering. Yeah, fantastic. And you know, speaking of engineering education, it's changing rapidly. So how is Penn State adapting to ensure that the students are prepared for the realities of their chosen fields? So experiential learning is a key part to that and really making sure that we honor that cornerstone to capstone experience for our students, whether it's maker spaces like this, these or opportunities for students to work in the professor's laboratories or opportunities for great internships that gives them a real career readiness that they should have. And we also equip those students with skills that help them go out and make a great impression as excellent interns um, and uh, excellent uh, future employees when they go out into the workplace. And I don't have to tell you this, but Penn State has a very rich engineering tradition. How do you plan to balance that tradition with innovation as the college evolves? And what are the opportunities for alumni to contribute to that? So the, the tradition here of the sort of history and the, and the foundational departments that set it off for the whole country in certain disciplines is something that we really need to honor and to build off of and to say that we have the basis to go farther and to do more because of the excellence that we've established here in the college. And so in terms of that tradition, I think it's honoring that and really listening to what makes you really proud to be a Penn State engineer. And that's where alumni can really help, to share those stories about what made a difference in their career. What were the things that were key components of their advancement that we want to make sure that we sustain and that we want to transition to a modern way of doing things. And so really getting those partners. We also have engineers out there in the world that are at the cutting edge. And for them to bring their expertise into the university and think about things like artificial intelligence or advanced manufacturing or advanced computing, all of these things help us stay at the leading edge of what's happening in education. Yeah, it's awesome things happening. So, um, and, you know, switching gears a little bit, we're obviously a top tier research institution mm -hmm. here at Penn State too, and we're known for the cutting edge research that's happening. What are some of the new or emerging research areas that you are particularly excited about? So I'm particularly excited about things that we can do to really address critical gaps in the American workforce. So thinking about areas in terms of energy, like nuclear energy, where we're gonna launch some very big programs to really look at how do we educate the next generation of engineers, not just the people here at, at University Park, but thinking about the pipeline. Who's going into the trades that are important for that industry? There's a similar uh, revolution happening in microelectronics. And so that's another place where we've really positioned ourselves well in terms of our partnerships with industry to develop these fields. And there's, there's even more. Every department you could think about something, but you know, I have to sort of give that nod to advanced manufacturing and to space technology and then sort of the foundation that ties through everything in the modern world is artificial intelligence and the things that we're doing to make our nation safe through national security, but also to make our nation advanced in terms of how we leverage 
artificial intelligence and in education and research and healthcare and all of the industries that touch engineering departments. Yeah, and you touched, you touched on this a little bit, but can you talk a little bit more about how we're positioning ourselves to really be a leader in some of these areas? Well, one, we have excellent people who are leading multidisciplinary efforts to uh, advance these specific areas, but also that we have outstanding education where we're put, positioning our graduate students to go out in the world and start companies, to be involved in uh, advancing new uh, technology and thinking about the translation of engineering to products and to technologies that are used in the industry. So I think that is gonna really position us well. Yeah, I certainly agree. And let's talk a little bit more about the alumni and the industry partners that are so important to the mm -hmm. college. How can that group of stakeholders collaborate with the college and help shape the future of Penn State engineering? And also, why is it important to you? So it's really important to have real world applications of what we're doing, to make what we're doing relevant to industry and to make uh, what we're doing relevant to the advancement of industry. So whether I'm going out and meeting with alumni in different parts of the country and getting their input from their companies, or whether those alumni are coming here and serving on our advisory councils in our alumni society, they're helping us sort of identify, here's what's emerging in the big companies. Here's what's happening in my small company. Because the other thing we can do is think about how are the things we're developing, like micro-credentials, where we're trying to give people and in industry an opportunity to upskill how is that relevant to your company or to other companies across the college? So I think we're able to think about how we tailor our educational innovation and how we prepare not only our current students, but our former students for uh, this advanced workforce. Yeah, I mean, there's just so many exciting things between mm -hmm. the undergraduate education, the research, the micro-credentialing, mm -hmm. you know, the alumni engagement. We were together at the event in Lidditz, Pennsylvania yeah, a couple yeah. months ago. It was just great to see the energy in the room and people sharing their Penn State stories. And yeah, yeah, agree. There's so many of us like that out there. Yeah, and I think the, a piece of that Penn State story is the fact that when we get folks together, they're meeting each other out in the workplace and out in these communities. So somebody who just graduated last year is meeting somebody who graduated 30 years ago and they're able to share their Penn State stories and really mentor different parts of this large Penn State community. Yeah, that's great. So what's your motivation to show up every day uh, and take on these complex challenges that are facing the college and the university? Well, like our students and like our faculty, I'm a problem solver too. So I come in ready to work and ready to come in and help um, address the issues that are coming up, whether it's a talking to a department leader, talking to a student, talking to a parent. I'm always ready to try and help use the skills and the opportunities and the access that I have to really help people navigate Penn State and also navigate their research careers, navigate their education. And so I really am like the head coach of the college, right? And then we need to get our fan base up and really um, have the college advance. And so that's an important part for, for me in terms of the reason I come to work every day. So. Oh, fantastic. Yeah, that's great. So now we're going to go into the lightning round, Tanya. Uh -oh, uh -oh. So <laughs> just say, share with us the first thing that uh -oh, comes to your mind. This. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so what's been your favorite moment at Penn State so far? Ooh, my favorite moment, my first graduation. The first graduation as dean, when we're out there and we're sort of pumping it up or whatever, and I'm able, able to see students that came through on scholarship that I was here and they came. I know where they're sitting in the audience, and maybe I might just call on somebody, right, mm -hmm. to, to, to say something great or to congratulate their classmates. That was, that was really uh, precious yes. to me, right? Yeah, and so important to the yeah. families that are out there. Mm -hmm. Exactly. So in addition to dean, what are three characteristics that describe you? Oh, um, empathetic, visionary, and strategic. All right, great, good words. <laughs> <laughs> Favorite book? Uh, it is a book by Maya Angelou. She's my favorite poet. I think it's Still I Rise, which is a collection of, of poems. Yeah, great. Yeah. Favorite musician? Stevie Wonder. All right. And I have to ask, favorite creamery ice cream flavor? Oh, Death by Chocolate. <laughs> okay, great. Well, we're done with the lightning round, but that Thank was great. <laughs> um, if you could ask alumni to help with one initiative, what would that be? If I could ask alumni to help with one initiative, it would really be the mentorship 
piece and really thinking about how are they mentoring those folks who are graduating and entering the workforce. They're at Penn State now in the bubble with all their friends, all their community. And sometimes when you go and start a job, there could be a little bit of loneliness because you don't have that cohort experience that you had when you were in college. So if those students are going out there as graduates, it would be great for some Penn Staters to say, here's how I navigated my first, my first five years on the job and, and how I advanced my career. I think that would be really meaningful for our, um, for our community. Mm -hmm. Definitely. So, Tanya, I have to say it's been a pleasure to sit down with you, learn a little bit more about your experiences and background and what kind of motivates you to be the leader in the College of Engineering. It's been really an enjoyable time together. Um, and I'm sure the college's alumni and friends appreciate the opportunity to get to know you a little bit as well. As we wrap up here, any final thoughts you'd like to share? So I think one of the things that's really important to share is the community that we've built and that the alumni are really a part of, and we'd like to continue them to engage in the community to help us make an impact and for them to make an impact on the current and future students. And so I would say there's a lot of things happening that they can engage with, like our alumni tailgate that will happen in the fall where I would be happy to meet people that I haven't already had the chance to meet, but we also have 175th anniversary coming in 2030. And as the head coach of the college, this idea of Penn State forever. I would love to see as many people fill our space and our courtyard out here in front of EDI so that we can celebrate how great a community we are and, and that strength in numbers and the impact that folks can have. And so any way that you can engage, whether it's mentoring people who are just going out in their careers or engaging your departments or engaging with research or bringing in the other alumni that you know that haven't been coming, those are things that would be really helpful in uh, continuing this real, to realize this community of uh, Penn State engineers. Yeah, that's fantastic. You know, we've had such great success with the tailgate of bringing the community together. So we want to continue that. And I'm looking forward to 2030 for sure. So thank you again for sitting down with me and for sharing a little bit more about who you are. Oh, it was my pleasure. Great. Thank you. And thanks all of you for joining us and learning a little bit more about Tanya Peebles, the Harold and Inga Marcus Dean of the College of Engineering here at Penn State.